Ebola is a very dangerous and widely well-known disease. It's really well known for its outbreak that happened in 2014 and it was really a dangerous disease. Ebola mainly originates from bats. And since it originates in bats, it would mainly stay in the population. Eventually it would go to an animal or it would go to a human. And when it would go to a human, that would get passed back either to the animal or the bats. Eventually it may get to another person. And this co caused some very big problems. When it got into human, it did something called a hemorrhagic fever. And this what made it so dangerous. So, at the end, by January 13th, 2016, there was approximately 11,315 people that have died. And we're going to talk about why it was so deadly of a disease. The hemorrhagic fe fever breaks down into two parts. Hemo means blood, or fever means it's flu-like symptoms. Essentially, the hosts of Ebola would get a lot of bleeding, and this caused a massive amount of bleeding, which led to its mortality rate of 25 to 90%. So we're going to talk about why it became so lethal. So Ebola normally attacks the dendritic cells. The dendritic cells control the immune system. And so it would tell the, the dendritic cells to tell the T cells and the natural killer cells, which control a lot of the white blood cells and kills a lot of the vi other viruses and bacteria in the immune system, to die. It would tell, the dendritic cells would tell these to die because they're controlled by Ebola. Next part, they would hide. They would infect macrophages and monocytes. Mono, macrophages and monocytes will, are hijacked by Ebola and are told to open up blood vessels. This causes inflammation and internal bleeding, which can be one of the problems. Also, macrophages produce cytokines and cytokines activate new a cell called neutrophils and neutrophils produce more cy more cytokines that which activate more macrophages this creates a positive feedback called the cytokine storm which opens more and more blood vessels the cytokine storm not only brings more and more blood blood into the body, but it also brings more and more white blood cells. This causes a massive amount of clot, clotting and massive amount of internal bleeding. This causes problems all over the body with various different symptoms in every part of the body systems. Here's a list of some of the different symptoms that this cytokine storm can bring. It can give joint pains, it can cause indigestion like diarrhea, rashes and bleeding, stomach pains, chest pains, internal, internal bleeding, fevers, and not only combined with um, that it attacks the liver, you have massive amount of bleeding. And one of the biggest problems with the cytokine storm is that the cytokine storm is not the virus actually attacking it, the body, it is actually the immune system attacking itself, attacking the virus. And because the immune system is it trying to attack in every possible way it can, it overpowers the system, which clogs up various different parts, and so it affects all different type, all the different body systems. It affects the muscular system, it attacks the nervous system, it attacks the digestive system, 
and it attacks the circulatory system. It also can affect the joints and the muscular system. All of these are massive side effects. But what ends up killing the person is not the virus itself. It is this immune system trying to kill the virus. The immune system ends up killing the host. The stronger the person's immune system, the stronger the cytokine storm. So a lot of times patients that are older end up dying from internal bleeding, but not from the cytokine storm. And it actually, they die slower than a stronger, more healthy individual who has a very strong immune system.